All right, Herc, it feels like uh, just yesterday we were in Portland for MLS Cup, and look at that, the MLS season just about to start in only a few days' time this upcoming weekend. So why don't we do a quick season preview edition of Book It. Uh, what's the first category here? Why don't we go with Young Player of the Year? Who's your Young Player of the Year, Hercules Gomez, for the 22 MLS season? Jaquil Marshall Ruti. Look at my man, the 17-year-old from Brampton, Ontario, the $20 million man. Why do I say the right back is a $20 million man? My man, Toronto FC has already put a $20 million evaluation on this player. Right back, right wing back, European uh, exposure, I should say, uh, scouts all over him. The Guardian has featured him. Now, check this out. Under Bob Bradley, who knows a thing or two about giving teenagers a chance to excel mm. and shine. We talked to Marcus Beasley, we talked Josie Aldor, and in his, in his time, yes, Juan Agudelo with the uh, U.S. Men's National Team. So look at this signing right here, or I shouldn't say signing, look at this potential European signing, and I think he's going to do big things this year. The slate is open for him to start with Bob Bradley and Toronto FC. Yeah, a couple of days ago, I think I was asking you about Toronto FC's academy. Did they have anybody? Uh, this kid's getting a lot of buzz yeah. right now. I'm going to go with a, a little bit more obvious pick, I think because we know what his brother can do. I'm going to uh -oh. go Paxton Aronson of the Philadelphia Union. Now, a lot of this is based on what Brendan Aronson has done uh, in his time, but let's look at the trajectory, right? This will be his third kind of full professional season. He had a season in the USL. I think he had 12, 13 games last year, a couple goals. If you look at Brendan Aronson's progression, and we think the two will be similar, Paxton could have that breakout season, either in 2022 or in 2023 i think it comes a season earlier because let's be honest the philadelphia union are going to play this kid so uh, i'm really excited about the future for paxton aronson he's my bet for young player of the year and i don't think you can make a bad bet knowing no. what his brother is. jonathan tannawal our good friend of the philly inquirer says that many rate him higher than his brother brendan at that age all right let's uh, go to our next topic here most valuable player these are the uh, the six that we've chosen for you to choose from her who are you going with <laughs> Give me Albert Ruznak. Give me my man, Albert Ruznak. Uh, where's he going to play? He's not going to play anymore with Ralph Salt Lake. He's going to a team that generally gets to the show, that generally does well in Major League Soccer. The playmaker is now going to have around him Nicolas Lodero, Jordan Morris, Raul Ruiz Diaz, Christian Roldan. Oh, yeah. Uh, and... He doesn't do so bad himself. Benefiting from those around him, my man's going to have a monster season. I just see Albert Ruznak being this year's MVP. I do follow you on Twitter, and earlier today you were telling people to bet their mortgage on Raul Ruiz Diaz to be the golden boot in Major League Soccer. I said it was a good bet. If he wins a golden boot, the score is going to get the MVP. But I, I like Albert Ruznak. It's a, it's a fair prediction. I I'm going way off the board of mine, really, really reaching, really reaching and, and kind of out on the edge of the limb, Juan Javier Chicharito Hernandez. Now, I think he would have had a decent shot at MVP or at least MVP consideration last year. The only thing that happened is that rut, you know, that 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 maybe three month spell late spring into the summer when he didn't play. If you look at the actual productivity of this player, 17 goals in 21 games. Or can you imagine what his number would be if he gets to 30 or 32 appearances? Dude, I, I think he's very, very likely to get over 20. And I think he might have a sniff at 25. I don't know what the Galaxy will be, but I do think that Chicharito will have a monster season. And you know if he's in L.A. and scoring goals, he's in the MVP discussion, probably a finalist. He was out of discussion last season because they weren't a playoff team. They'll be a playoff team this year, and I agree with you. If he stays healthy, that's the biggest if. He's going to be productive. Let's go from the best to the worst. Uh, wooden Spoon, uh, who do you think will be the worst team, Hercules, in Major League Soccer? Uh, for this, can we go with my friend, the head coach of Charlotte FC, Miguel Angel Ramirez, please? I want Miguel Angel Ramirez, please. O sea, yo, esperemos un poco a ver cómo acaba el roster. Y cuando acabemos el roster, me vuelves a hacer la misma pregunta y te digo, pues mira, ahora la verdad lo veo un poquito más cerca. Ahora estamos jodidos. <laughs> There you go, Seb. On to you. That's it. That's, That's it. it. I got nothing you're else. You're right. Hey, look, if the, if the coach is telling you we're screwed and you're an expansion team, I, I think it's a pretty good bet. So you know how you always say whenever we say, who's going to win the MLS Cup? Uh, who's your preseason MLS Cup pick? 
your default is Seattle. And sometimes I think it's because of your pro Sounders ways, but sometimes I think it's because you're smart. You know there's a very, very good bet that the Seattle Sounders are going to be in the big games in MLS. Well, guess what? When it comes to Wooden Spoon, I think it's a very, very easy bet to say that FC Cincinnati is going to take home that title again. Look, they ju they've just been in this spot for too many years for me to say, I'm going to take them out of the race. I know there's been significant investment in this team, but it feels like it's significant investment without any real idea of what to do. They do have more MLS savvy management, uh, especially in the front office this year. So I think they'll do better in terms of finding the right talent, working the salary cap to fit this league and finally get some success in MLS. But man, there's just so much history of failure hurt in Cincinnati. They got they got to be a wooden they got to be a wooden spoon favorite if not candidate but I, I like you've your, got no heart I like I'm your, with Pat Noonan on this one okay all right uh, surprise team I guess this could be surprise good or bad um, which one did you go do you go good surprise or you go bad surprise? I went good surprise I went with FC Dallas Nico Steves the new coach at FC Dallas he's got some shiny new toys to play with they're gonna be <laughs> a lot better than last season let's be honest uh, along with that factory la fabrica de fuerzas básicas mm -hmm. that great academy they're finally going to invest listen jesus ferreira to a lot of us men's national team fans maybe the butt of some jokes but he's been very good for fc dallas paula riola has been very a very good major league soccer player and alan velasco the new 19 year old signing for the independiente uh, that's a very scary front three for a team that's gonna be very hard working in a tough place to play that is dallas and in those summer months the dog days of mm. summer this team should uh, climb the standings. I think they will surprise a lot of people this season. All right. So FC Dallas, Herc's surprise team. I'm going to go with a team that we really battered quite a bit last year. Mm. And that was Inter-Miami. Now, last year, I think they deserved quite a bit of that criticism. But here's the thing. They were so bad last year, and I really like what they did. I mean, they, they blew the thing up, right? 17, 17 players gone. I mean, that's a huge, huge roster turnover. That That is really impressive work. I think the other thing here is that you got to trust Chris Henderson, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the guy just has, he's got so much experience uh, in MLS and success in MLS. And so I think going into Miami now, they, they got to sort it out. They've had time. It's got to be now. They're, they're going to be a surprise team. They're going to sneak in the playoffs. Plus, plus you interviewed Phil Neville and I heard he was very, very good. So I think he can get guys to run through a wall for him. Uh, let's see if he can do that very with good. Miami. Very good. Chris Henderson will do good things as well. MLS cup herc let's put our money where our mouth is who do you think will be mls cup champion let me shock the world when i say the seattle sounders are your 2022 mls cup champions this is easy for me seb a lot of probabilities the last six years they've made four finals they've won two of them if you're trying to think of a team that's consistent since 2017 they've been no worse than second in the western conference i just mentioned albert ruznak as an mvp i told you and i told everybody uh -huh. plus 1000 on raul Ruiz diaz golden boot is great great value last Last year, Nicolo Dato injured. Uh, Jordan Morris injured. They're back in healthy. This is also the best defensive team last year in Major League Soccer. Oh, by the way, Brian Schmetzer still coaches this team, and they still play in Major League Soccer. So what do we know to be true? They get mm. to the final. They win finals. All right. Seattle is a team that I think is a pretty safe bet. What about Atlanta United? That's where I'm going to go for MLS Cup. Now, I think I said this sometime back in like October, November, when they were starting to roll right before the playoffs and they were starting to make some of these big signings. I said, I'm going to put Atlanta as my way too early 2022 uh, MLS Cup prediction. So I, I think I'm going to stick with it. I like what Atlanta United is doing. I like what they're building. And I really I have a lot of faith in Gonzalo Pineda. I remember us being hurt up in Seattle during the Western Conference Final back in the day. And he was talking about how he was game planning with you in an interview uh, for LAFC and Carlos Vela. And so I just have so much respect for yeah. the, the footballing mind of Pineda that I think he is really now given the time going to find something special with this Atlanta United team. And you know what? MLS needs Atlanta United. MLS needs um, Atlanta United. All right, where are we going next? Bold prediction. Something we do quite a bit on this show. Bold prediction of the year. Herc, what is your bold prediction for 2022? Jordi Alexander Mikhailovic will score double digit goals and get double digit assists. Thus, he will be in the conversation for Major League Soccer mm. MVP. This is a player 
that is on the cusp of playing with the national team. Plays up in Montreal. He's a very good player, set, set piece specialist, very good soccer IQ in the final third. He can pass, he can finish. I think he's really putting it all together. And I think they're gonna be a very dynamic team in Montreal. Do not be surprised when Jordi Mihailovic has those goals and those assists and he's in that conversation. You, hit, you heard it here first. Mm. Yeah, it, that's a bold prediction. I think he's got, what, like maybe a career high of four goals. So if you're saying double-digit goals and double-digit assists, it's bold. My bold prediction is going to be the Portland Timbers will miss the playoffs. That's right. The team that made it to MLS Cup last year and hosted MLS Cup is not going to make the postseason this year. Now, maybe in MLS that's not that bold of a prediction because just because you made MLS Cup one year doesn't mean anything. Just because you win MLS Cup doesn't mean you're going to make the playoffs the next year. Just ask the Columbus crew. Some of this, if I'm honest, has to do with vibes. I don't think there's great vibes around the Portland Timbers organization right now with everything going on with the Andy Polo situation and the Mayor Paulson situation, which we've addressed ad nauseum on this show. But beyond that, they're just that little bit older. And I think there's got to be some type of hangover from losing an MLS Cup final at home and all the, the kind of wear, both physically and emotionally, that would have taken uh, on this Timbers team. The one bit of faith I got, the one bit of faith I got in Portland, Giovanni Savarese. If anybody can kind of take a group that's under fire and sort things out, I do believe uh, it's the Timbers manager.